This lecture is integrated in the course on control on state space. And uh, uh, to know further details on the subjects that are going to be addressed, you can uh, read the book of Control in Space Status by João Miranda Lemos on chapter eight, at least for those of you who are able to learn to read in Portuguese. So uh, this lecture is about the direct method of Lyapunov or second uh, method of Lyapunov. This is a quite important method. It's uh, one of the main tools, together with, uh, with its uh, developments, that you can use uh, to not only analyze the stability of nonlinear systems, but also to design nonlinear controllers. Uh, its inventor was uh, Lyapunov, who was living between the 19th and the, 20th, the early 20th century. And he's, he published his memory as part of his uh, PhD thesis in 1892. And it is certainly surprising that uh, this uh, method is still one of the main working horses of uh, research development in the 21st century. In order to understand what is uh, Lyapunov's direct method, we have to uh, introduce the concept of positive definite uh, functions. This is a mathematical concept. So we say that uh, V of X, where X is the state, is a positive uh, definite function if it is uh, a function that maps the state on a real number, and it is such that uh, the value taken by the, by the function at the origin of the state space is zero. So if you look uh, here, you, you write this as V0 equal to zero, where the zero between the curl brackets is a vector, is the state vector at the origin. And this zero is a real number. And furthermore, uh, there is a ball that encloses the origin, such that V of X is strictly positive for all possible states X different from the origin. This is quite important that you uh, exclude the origin, because at the origin, V of zero is zero. Uh, if the ball comprises the whole state, then we say that the function is uh, globally positive definite. In many cases, I will just say positive definite, or uh, instead of saying locally positive definite or globally positive definite, uh, and uh, I will refer mainly to locally positive definite functions. Another other definitions that are important are uh, positive semi-definite functions in which uh, the function vanishes at the origin and outside the origin then it is bigger or equal to zero for all states, of course, different from the origin. You can also, you can also define uh, negative definite uh, functions. These are the functions uh, such that minus the function is positive semi-definite uh, or semi-definite negative functions these are the functions such that minus the function is positive semi-definite. You have here some examples, graphical examples of uh, positive definite functions. In this case, 
uh, negative definite functions. In this case, we have an example. In this third case, we have an example of a positive semi-definite function. You, you uh, will uh, see that uh, you will recognize that the function vanishes along the x2 axis. And uh, <clears throat> final, finally, an example of an indefinite function in this case. It's a kind of saddle. So if you are at the origin, you are at zero. Uh, if you move along the x1 uh, axis, you will go to positive values. But if you move along the x2 uh, axis, then you will go to negative values. So close to the origin, if you consider a small ball of values of states ar around the, the origin, you will always find values of the state for which the function is positive and others for which it is negative, no matter how small the ball is. So this is an indefinite function. You can also see uh, other examples now instead of using a graphical uh, representation using a, some analytical, so some formula representation. Uh, in the case of A, well, uh, for x1 and x2, it's obvious that v of x is positive. It is enough that, say, even suppose that x1 is zero and x2 is different from zero. This is positive. So uh, you, you will recognize this very easily as a positive definite function. In the case of B, for x2 equal to minus x1, you vanish, the function vanishes. And uh, so this is a positive semi-definite function because it is always positive or zero outside the origin. For instance, for x1 equal to five and x2 equal to minus five, uh, v of x is zero. And it's the same for the other examples. Quadratic forms play uh, an important uh, role in what we are going to speak about. And um, you, what is a quadratic function? A quadratic function is a polynomial in x that you can write in this way. So it's x transposed times a matrix P, which is symmetric and positive definite, and uh, times the vector x. So you will recognize that this is a scalar because you are multiplying a row vector, x transposed, by Px, which is a column vector, and that gives you uh, a scalar. Uh, so what is the condition on p so that so that this uh, function is always positive outside the origin well you can use uh, sylvester's criterion that says that you pick up p11 and it must be z bigger than zero then you pick up you add the elements that are close close to uh, P11, so P12 and P21. And if I assume that P is symmetric, P21 is equal to P12 and P22, compute the determinant, and it must be bigger than zero, and go, go on and on by adding some extra elements, the so-called, and to build the so-called uh, principal minors of the function up to the determinant of the function, and all of them must be bigger than zero. If this is the case, then the quadratic form is positive definite. This is Sylvester's criterion. Uh, you can see here one example of applying the Sylvester's criterion. Suppose that v of x is this quadratic form. Uh, you can uh, write this form in this way. It's, it involves some algebra. It's simpler to go from line two to line one but it is also possible to go from line one to line two with a bit of algebra and uh, if you build 
the principal minors, which is 10, then uh, 10, 1, 1, 4, and compute the determinant, which is 39, and then the determinant of the matrix, which is 17, all of them are positive. So this function is always strictly positive for x1 and x2, not simultaneously zero, and x3, of course. Now, an important concept is the concept of a Lyapunov function. And to consider a Lyapunov function, we are uh, introducing, we introduce the uh, dynamics of the state model. So, suppose that you have a nonlinear system, in general, a nonlinear system uh, that has no input. We call it an autonomous system. The derivative of x is equal to f of x with some initial condition. And we assume that f of 0 is 0, so that uh, x equal to 0 is an equilibrium point of this system. Because uh, if this holds, then the derivative will be 0, and x equal to 0 will be a constant, a constant solution of the equation. Now, define a function v of the state such that in a ball around the origin, V is definite positive. It is continuous with continuous partial derivatives. And furthermore, along the solutions of the, of the uh, equation, the state equation, the, the derivative, the total derivative of V with respect to T is smaller or equal to zero. Now, let's understand what, what we have here. You can see, uh, you can look at this plot uh, uh, where the state space is just made of two variables, x1 and x2. So suppose that you pick up some initial condition and you integrate your state equation starting from this initial condition and you get a trajectory for the state. Okay? Now, uh, at t equal to zero, you have x of zero, so you can compute v of x of zero. And then for a general point t, you have your state x at that time t, and you compute v of x of t. So uh, you can compute uh, a sequence of values of the function v uh, for several values of t, that map in some state x of t, and then you compute v of x of t. So v is a function of x, which is a function of t. So v is an implicit function of t. And uh, for the, the function v to be a Lyapunov function, we you have to impose this condition that the total derivative of v with respect to t is smaller or equal to zero. How can we compute this derivative? You use the Kine rule for derivatives. So uh, to compute the total derivative of v with respect to t, you differentiate, you compute a partial derivative of v with respect to x1 and multiply by the derivative by the derivative of x1 with respect to t. And then you add the partial derivative of v with respect to x2 and multiply by the total derivative of x2 with respect to t and so on up to uh, you, you have added all the components. This is nothing more than the well-known uh, rule to compute the composite, uh, uh, the, the derivative of composite functions. And uh, this is the well-known Kane rule for derivatives. Now, let's use what that the fact that we know that x satisfies the, satisfies the state model. So dx1 dt is f1, and dx2 dt is f2, and so on, and dxn dt is fn. So you end up with this expression, with this expression for the total derivative of v with respect to time. And you can recognize here that this is nothing more than the gradient, the internal product 
of the gradient factor of v with respect to x uh, with the internal product with the vector f of uh, of the field vector that define the differential state model. Now, the Lyapunov local stability theorem is deceptively simple. It says that if you consider your uh, nonlinear state model, autonomous nonlinear state model, and you consider uh, a ball around the equilibrium point that and we are considering that the equilibrium point is the origin. Now, if you are able to define a Lyapunov function v of x such that the VDT is smaller or equal to zero, then the origin is stable in the sense of Lyapunov, at least is stable at least it could be asymptotically stable but uh, you can ensure if dvdt is smaller or equal to zero that it is stable if you are able to prove that to prove that dvdt the derivative of v with respect to time is strictly smaller than zero for all points apart from the origin then the origin is locally asymptotically stable in the sense of the Aponov. Now, what is the difficulty in applying this theory? The, the difficulty is on building this function V uh, as uh, an appropriate function with its properties. Now, what is the interpretation? Well, you, you, if you, if you are, if you are able to read in Portuguese, you can look at the proof in the book I mentioned to you, Control on uh, Control on Status. Uh, if you are not, uh, if you are not able to speak Portuguese, uh, there are several books that uh, uh, contain uh, the proof of this theorem. But it is easy to have a heuristic. Uh, picture of what is going on now uh, you are up to now able to measure distances with a ruler in meters so you have uh, you are uh, five meters away from the origin of st state space or two meters away from the origin of state space but uh, now you are going to learn another way of measuring the distance with respect to the origin and this is with uh, uh, Lyapunov functions. And uh, the idea is this, this. Suppose that you have a, a Lyapunov function and uh, you cut the function using horizontal planes. So you have the level curves that you can see here on the right, this picture on, on the right. And depending on the value of the function v, you will get some curves. And uh, so when you go inside one of these curves, you are reducing the value of V. Okay? And the fact that the derivative with respect to time is negative, it just tells you that you are uh, reducing V. So you are, your trajectory of the state is cutting these level functions to the interior. And of course, you must. Uh, approximate uh, the origin okay this of course uh, needs to be proved but uh, the idea of the proof is actually this one let me give you one example suppose that uh, we have this nonlinear system where f1 is this function minus x1 minus x1 x times x2 squared and f2 is minus x2 minus x2 x1 squared and we postulate uh, this function to be a Lyapunov function. So uh, we have to check the conditions. Of course, this function vanishes at equilibrium point. And uh, you, you can observe that the origin is an equilibrium point for x1 equal to 0, x2 equal to 0. Uh, both these derivatives vanish. And also, the Lyapunov function or the Lyapunov function candidate vanishes. It is continuous. 
It is positive uh, definite, of course. It is continuous. And you can uh, differentiate it because you just have a sum of polynomials that are uh, the derivatives exist and you can compute them. Now, the issue is to compute the derivative, the total derivative with respect to time of V along the trajectories of this system. Now, what do you do? You compute, uh, use the kind rule. So it's, this is dv dx1 times dx1 dt plus dv dx2 times dx2 dt. And then for dx1 dt and dx2 dt, you use the expressions of the state model. And then you simplify things. And uh, it's very easy to recognize that this term is strictly smaller than zero for all states that are not at the origin, zero, zero. So we can conclude by applying Lyapunov's uh, theorem that the origin x equal to zero is a locally asymptotically stable equilibrium. If you look, if you think about our, our uh, geometric intuition, uh, you have a curve, a trajectory uh, of the state, which is cutting the level curves. And the level curves in this case are very simple. They are just circumferences to the interior. Actually, this was a curve just uh, plotted by hand. It was uh, sketched by hand. Uh, if you want to look at uh, two curves, they are not as curly as the other ones, but they always go, 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 go to, to the origin. Now, uh, another example, another example. Take this system and take as Lyapunov functions as a candidate, uh, as a Lyapunov function candidate, this function here. And uh, of course, A and B must be positive because V must be positive definite, so A and B must be positive. And uh, maybe we can select A and B uh, so that we can easily prove that the derivative is negative. Now, apply the same technique as we did before. So compute the partial derivative and uh, replace the derivatives of x1 and x2 with respect to time by the expressions in the state equations. There is a curl missing here. And then simplify things and you get this expression. Now, if you select a equal to 2, b equal to 1, then you get minus a sum of the force power of x1 and x2. And you easily recognize that this is smaller than 0 outside the origin, that is to say, for x out from the vector 0, 0. So you can. Uh, you can uh, conclude that the origin of, is of this system is uh, the origin of the state for this system is a locally asymptotically stable equilibrium form. And you can see here some simulations in the, the, the field vector and the trajectory of the states approaching the origin. Now, if you explore this idea of measuring the distance to uh, the equilibrium point using a Lyapunov function, you can have this instability theorem. So suppose that you have uh, an autonomous system, the x dt equal to f of x, where x equal to zero is an equilibrium point, so f of zero is zero. And uh, you can conclude that uh, this equilibrium is unstable if there is a function w of x, which is continuous with continuous partial derivatives, such that W of x is positive definite around the origin, and the derivative is also positive definite around the origin. This means that the function w around the trajectories of the state is increasing, so you are moving away from, from your equilibrium point. And applying this theorem, you can conclude that uh, the equilibrium point is unstable. 
Uh, this is a simple example where don't get confused with this f. And we usually call f small f the vector field, but no, this is just a function, a scalar function actually of x1 and x2 can must be. Uh, I'm assuming that this f is differentiable, and uh, we can conclude we can conclude that if f is positive, then the origin is asymptotically stable, and if f is negative, it is unstable. And uh, how can we do it? Okay, let's compute. Let's take this Lyapunov quadratic Lyapunov function, compute the derivative of v using the same same technique. So apply the Kane rule, replace an x1 dot and x2 dot by the uh, expressions for the derivatives of x1 and x2, simplify things, and you get this equation here, this expression here for v dot. Now, this is minus, then you have a term which is always bigger than zero, that multiplies f. And if f is positive, then v dot is negative. So you apply Lyapunov's theorem, and you conclude that the origin is asymptotically stable. If f is negative, then due, due to this minus sign, v dot is positive, and by applying the previous theorem, you conclude that the origin is unstable. Most of the time, we are going to speak about locally um, stable uh, concepts. Uh, and to, to be more precise, we need to actually add another, uh, uh, another theorem, which is uh, the condition for global asymptotic stability. And um, this theorem reads as this. So uh, an equilibrium point is uh, asymptotically stable, globally asymptotically stable, if uh, V satisfies the condition for the local asymptotically stable, so the uh, so local uh, asymptotically stable condition. And furthermore, that V of X goes to infinity when the norm of X goes unbound. Okay, so uh, to have a global result on asymptotic uh, stability, you have to add this extra condition that is marked here on yellow that says that V grows. Uh, I'm not going to prove this result, but I can give you some uh, heuristic uh, argument on that. Suppose that you have this situation. In this situation, uh, it is possible that the state trajectory, which is this dark, uh, dark line here, uh, cuts the level lines of V and escapes through this valley. Now, if uh, you impose that this is not a valid function because the v of x goes to infinity. So there, so there is no value that goes to infinity. And all uh, when you are cutting the level curves, you will again be approaching the origin. It's not possible that you find a value that drives you always by smaller and smaller values away from the origin. Now, let's see, to understand a little bit uh, better this, uh, these notions of uh, local stability uh, and uh, to show also a situation in which the stability is not global, let's consider uh, something that we can picture very well in our minds. This is a frictionless pendulum so-called mathematical pendulum. So it's a pendulum that uh, swings about the point and uh, the line of the pendulum is a rigid, is rigid and has um, no mass and all the mass is assumed to be uh, concentrated here 
and um, uh, you have an angle theta that you take as variable state variable x1 and then the other state variable is the angular velocity d theta dt so uh, the derivative of the angle is the angular velocity so the x1 dt is x2 and you can also uh, easily uh, develop this this uh, um, second equation using uh, equilibrium of forces in the newton's law of motion now we can take as Lyapunov, a candidate Lyapunov function, the total energy, which is the sum of potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And uh, this is nice because now you, here you have some cosine, it's not a quadratic function. If you compute the derivative, you get zero. So the energy is concerned in this system. Uh, but uh, more than that, we could say in a naive way that the equilibrium points of the pendulum are always stable at least. Now, you can think of two situations. The situation in which the pendulum is pointing downwards. Okay. Your intuition tells you that you if you deviate a little bit from the equilibrium, the pendulum starts swinging about that equilibrium. And uh, this is the notion of stable. Now, if the, the pendulum is pointing upwards, you also have an equilibrium for it. So if theta is equal to pi, or in degrees, 180 degrees, the pendulum is pointing upwards, if you deviate it a little bit, it will move away. So, uh, you know, uh, by some physical arguments, that you will uh, not have a stable equilibrium. Nevertheless, the derivative is still zero. So, what is the mystery here? Well, let's look at the function, type of function that we have. If you uh, look, at uh, v close to zero zero then actually you have uh, a positive definite function which is a positive def definite function around some region uh, of the origin but if you look at v uh, around the equilibrium point that corresponds to the upwards position then you have a saddle Okay, and this is by no means a, um, this is by no means uh, a positive def definite function. Okay, because remember that uh, at the origin, so at equilibrium point, I'm sorry, it's not no longer the origin, but at the equilibrium point, it must be zero. So if you add a constant so that at this point this is zero, there are directions, states for which the function is positive and others for which it is negative. So this is the situation in which you have an indefinite function. And uh, although the derivative is constant, although the derivative is zero along the, the trajectories, then uh, this is not a, a positive definite function and you cannot uh, conclude as expected that uh, the upwards position is in a stable equilibrium. You can see, you can see here uh, globally what happens. You, you have local equilibrium, local, locally stable equilibrium separated by uh, look, uh, unstable equilibrium. And uh, remember that you don't have just a point uh, that equal to zero and that equal to pi because you have all the multiples of uh, two pi. Now, this example is interesting uh, for several reasons. One, one reason is that if you apply, if you apply the linearization method, 
you linearize the system. That's a good exercise. So pick up the equations for the pendulum and linearize it around the origin, zero, zero. And uh, you linearize it and you compute the eigenvalues of the linearized systems and you get imaginary eigenvalues. So you cannot conclude anything on the stability of the nonlinear equations of the, of the nonlinear uh, model. But based on Lyapunov method, we could prove that it was uh, a stable equilibrium point. So uh, our uh, more powerful theorem of uh, Lyapunov actually uh, tells you something that you cannot tells you a, con a conclusion that you cannot reach by using linearization. And you can also say something extra in this case, which is uh, now in this case, v dot is equal to zero. So v is conserved. And uh, if v dot is equal to zero, then v is conserved. That is to say, it's constant around the trajectories of the equilibrium. And since they are, these are stable, they cannot move away. So uh, you are moving around the equilibrium in, into um, uh, lines that are closed. And these are the level lines. These are the level lines of the energy function around the equilibrium. So you can conclude that you are oscillating. You have periodic oscillations of the pendulum around the equilibrium. That is also an interesting uh, conclusion that you can take from a Lyapunov method, from applying the Lyapunov method. And actually, if you do a simulation, this is a simulation in which you see this uh, phase portrait, portrait of uh, the pendulum, uh, where you have here, this is the origin, this point here is the origin. This is again the origin because it's it's the origin plus two pi. And this point here is the point, the, the equilibrium corresponding to the upwards position, which is unstable. So we deviate it a little bit, and it all either moves from one basin of attraction or to the other basin of attraction. Okay. Now, what can we say? about uh, uh, applying this method to linear systems. Suppose that uh, our nonlinear system is actually linear. So f of x is a of x t, uh, and uh, the state x has dimension n, as usually that's what we call for the dimension of the state. And uh, assume that a is non-singular, and we uh, try to be the Lyapunov function, which is a quadratic form x transpose dx with p symmetric and positive definite. So p is a positive definite matrix. So that so that this function this function is a positive definite function. Now compute the derivative. If you compute the derivative and uh, use the model. So uh, v, use the definition of v, v is x transpose dx. Now apply the rule for differentiating products of matrices and you get this expression. So it's the derivative of the first one times uh, the second one plus the first one times the derivative of the second one. And remember that differentiating the transpose is the same of transposing the derivative. The derivative. Now use the expression for the xdt, which is ax. And uh, remember that the transpose of ax is x transpose a, a transpose. So you get this expression. Now the multiplication of matrices is associated is associative. So you can put x transpose and x in evidence, and you get this stuff here. So what is the conclusion? for the equilibrium x equal to zero to be asymptotically stable, a transpose p plus p a must be negative definite. Or 
if you want, if you want, uh, we can say that a transpose p plus p a is minus some positive definite matrix Q. Okay. Now we have concluded that if p is uh, if P is a, a positive definite matrix, then for the system to be, for the origin of the linear system to be asymptotically stable, then AT, AT, A transpose P plus PA must be minus a positive definite matrix Q. Now, actually, it is also true that uh, you can think the other way around. And uh, if the system is, is asymptotically stable, then no matter what positive definite matrix Q you select, you will always be able to solve this equation in order to P to find a positive definite matrix P. So uh, this P can be used as a Lyapunov function. So you can you can then conclude stability by your uh, by the Lyapunov theorem. Okay, this this equation is called the Lyapunov equation, and uh, this equation is a kind of machine to produce Lyapunov functions for a synthetically stable uh, a synthetically stable linear systems. Of course, you can uh, select Q uh, as you wish, provided it is uh, a positive definite. So one possibility is, for instance, to select Q equal to, to the identity. Now, this equation appears in many problems in control, and sometimes uh, you can uh, take advantage of it with different values for Q. So it's important to mention it here. Of course, of course, uh, uh, the, this result must be proved. Again, you can look at the book. Uh, the proof is a little bit uh, cumbersome. Now, how can we solve, how can we solve the Lyapunov equation? Well, uh, in practice, you use uh, use a numerical method to solve the Lyapunov equation, and MATLAB, for instance, provides uh, to a toolbox uh, function that allows you to solve this Lyapunov equation. But you can also uh, solve it using the method of unknown multipliers. So suppose that you have this system with this A matrix, and uh, you have selected Q to be the identity. So you write the Lyapunov equation and you take advantage of the fact that P is symmetric. So P21 is equal to P12. So you reduce the number of unknowns. And then you expand everything and equate all the elements of the corresponding positions in the matrices. And you get a system of equations and you end up with uh, your uh, the entries of your P matrix, and of course, in this case, uh, you can uh, apply Sylvester's method. So five four is positive, and the determinant of P is positive, and by Sylvester's criterion, then you can conclude that the system is actually asymptotically stable. Now. Let's see another topic, which is will be quite important in the next uh, chapter, in the next lecture, concerning uh, control design. And uh, this this theorem appeared uh, about sixty or seventy years after uh, uh, Lyapunov, Lyapunov's original theorem. It, it appeared in the in, uh, 1950s, and it was due to La Salle. So we call it uh, invariant set theorem or La Salle theorem. Actually, there is a small difference between both, but uh, we will identify both things. 
And to understand this theorem, let's introduce the notion of invariant set. An invariant set is a set of states such that if you start with an initial condition and start integrating your state equations, you remain in the set. So an equilibrium point is actually an invariant set because if you start at the equilibrium point, you stay at the equilibrium point. The wall state space is uh, the wall state space is also an invariant set. If you start in the state space, you will stay in the, the state space. A limit cycle. If you start in a limit cycle, you will stay in the limit cycle. So it's also a state space, um, an invariant set. Now, what is the local version of the invariant set theorem? Remember what we said about V measuring uh, distance with respect to the equilibrium point. And uh, suppose that um, the v dot, so the derivative of v with respect to time, is strictly negative. So v is decreasing, 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 and you go, you go to the origin. Now suppose that v dot is smaller or equal to zero. So there are regions of the state where uh, v dot is zero. So there uh v is no longer reduced so maybe you could be tempted to say that uh v is being reduced so the state uh, is approaching the origin but then it enters the region in which v dot is zero and stops so all trajectories maybe we could be tempted to say that all trajectories approach the region in which v dot is zero. Actually, it's not that simple. All trajectories approach the largest invariant set inside the region in which um, v dot is zero. Actually, there is a, a tech, another technical condition, which is v of x must be uh, bounded in some uh, uh, region that contains the invariant set. So how can we apply this theorem? How can we apply this theorem? You compute the sets in which v dot is zero, and then look at this set of states and try to find out what is the invariant set the largest invariant set that is contained in this region where v dot is zero so let's see one example suppose that we have uh, this dynamical system and uh, take as candidate the Apanov function this one here and let's start by applying the standard Lyapunov theorem so if you compute v dot, you get v dot equals to minus x14, and this is smaller or equal to zero. Say, for instance, for x1 equal to zero and x2 equal to five, which is outside the origin, this vanishes. So this is smaller or equal to zero. So the standard Lyapunov theorem uh, just tell, let you uh, state that the, ori the origin is stable it could be asymptotically stable but the theorem does not allow it to say more now let's uh, use the invariant set theorem to uh, apply the invariant set theorem we start by finding out what is the set in which v dot is zero well since v dot is minus x1 to 4 the set in which v dot is zero is just x1 equal to zero so it's just a vertical axis for x2. And we have this vertical axis here. Now, we know that all the trajectories will approach the largest invariant set in this axis, because this is the, the set where v dot is zero. 
So uh, let's pick up one point to see if it is within that invariant set. Remember that to be in an invariant set, if you start there, you must remain there. So uh, pick up this point A and uh, let's see, how can we see whether it belongs to an invariant set? Now, uh, write down the equations, write in the equations. At point A, at point A, so x1 is zero, x1 is zero, so the derivative of x1 is x2 is positive, it's positive, okay? So the x1 dt is positive because x1 is zero, x2 is positive, so suppose that uh, the, the coordinate of A, the x2 coordinate of A is four, so you have uh, four up to three and times two, that's a large number, uh, and the derivative of x2 is zero, so actually you are moving in this direction. You don't move in the vertical direction because the derivative of x2 is zero and you move to the right. So A would immediately move away from the set where V2 is zero. So A cannot belong to the invariant set contained in this vertical axis. If you consider a point here, this is also true. Okay, you will be moving in this direction. So all, almost all the points in this vertical, do, vertical axis do not belong to the invariant set containing it. The only point that remains is the origin. Now, if you are at the origin, then uh, actually you stay there. So the origin belongs to an invariant set. And this is the largest invariant set contained in the set where v dot is zero. So you can say that all trajectories will approach zero, zero. And in this way, you can state that zero, zero is asymptotically stable. Let's look at uh, the, let's look at the, the a simulation. The integration, the numerical integration of the equations, and actually see all the trajectories moving, approaching the, the origin. But we have reached this conclusion by applying the invariant set theorem. Now, the invariant set theorem will be quite important in the next lecture concerned with controller design. And uh, we are going to explore it. Uh, but uh, for the moment, that's it. Thank you for your attention.